In this video, I'm going to talk about a new Bluetooth audio codec called Aptex Lossless that gives us lossless CD quality audio over Bluetooth. Hello ladies. And I'm going to explain what it is, why its implementation in smartphones is incredibly confusing, and lastly, I'll try my best to answer the question, do you need it? This episode is brought to you by Munich High End, the world's leading international audio show, running May 9 through 12 at the MOC. Welcome back, everybody. Yes, lossless audio over Bluetooth used to be a pipe dream. But now, according to Qualcomm, it's a reality. Now, this, in theory, adds the lossless handling of CD quality audio to the Bluetooth headphone experience. Now, there's a side note here. Please ignore the promotional puffery of manufacturers promising high-res audio support from Bluetooth connections, because they are bending the truth. Yes, their headphones will play high-res files, but not before discarding audio data. Now, whether you can hear what's missing is another matter entirely, but only Aptex Lossless claims to handle CD quality streams, but not high res, CD quality streams without throwing away any data. I've been listening to music through three different sets of true wireless IEMs of late, and they are the Denon Pearl Pro, the Bose QC Ultra, and the Sennheiser, <laughs> this is such a mouthful, the Sennheiser Momentum True Wireless 4 and each one of them supports Qualcomm's latest Bluetooth codec, Aptex Lossless. Now, before the advent of Aptex Lossless, all Bluetooth audio codecs were lossy, all of them. They discarded audio data to fit the digital signal down Bluetooth's narrow data pipe. And according to Qualcomm, over one megabits per second is required to carry CD quality signals from the smartphone to your headphones without audio data loss. Because Qualcomm asserts that its Aptex lossless codec operates at between 1.1 and 1.2 megabits per second. However, one true wireless earphone manufacturer told me that Qualcomm has gone beyond the Bluetooth specification to get there. He told me that the Bluetooth radio is configured and operated outside of the Bluetooth specification and that this is proprietary to Qualcomm and is part of their Snapdragon Sound certification. So for lossless CD quality audio, not only do our earphones or headphones need to support Snapdragon Sound with Aptex lossless, but our smartphones do too. Now two such models are the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V and the Asus or Asus Zenfone 10, and I've got both. But more are listed on Qualcomm's website. And if you go to that website, you'll notice that not a single iPhone makes the cut. And that's because iPhones support only AAC on top of the SBC, which is mandated by the Bluetooth SIG. And AAC can be found in the majority of Bluetooth headphones coming to market nowadays. So iPhone users, you're not really part of this conversation, I'm sorry to say. But Android, on the other hand, has become a potpourri of advanced audio codecs. Qualcomm alone has given us Aptex, Aptex HD, Aptex Live, Aptex Low Latency, Aptex Adaptive, and now Aptex Lossless. But not all Aptex flavors are supported by all Android phones. Now, fortunately, we can verify the Bluetooth audio codec being used between our smartphone and our headphone by looking at the Bluetooth settings panel. And more advanced users will use Android's developer options page. And perhaps the most ubiquitous advanced Bluetooth audio codec is Sony's LDAC, which is now loaded into every Android phone because it's part of the Android OS now as a standard. Now, LDAC isn't like other Bluetooth audio codecs because it's flexible. So in ideal conditions, where the phone is close to the smartphone and there aren't a lot of other Bluetooth transmissions in the area, it operates at 990 kilobits per second. So almost a megabit per second, but not quite so close, but no cigar. Now, when faced with Bluetooth congestion or a weaker Bluetooth signal, the phone will drop LDAC's transmission rate to 660 kilobits per second. And in a worst case scenario, it'll step down again to 330 kilobits per second, only scaling back up again as conditions improve. In other words, 
the source device dynamically adjusts LDAC's bitrate according to environmental conditions. Now you need to remember this because we'll be coming back to it shortly. Now me, I not only want to hear what Aptex lossless can do, but I want to see visual confirmation of its presence on my phone. Now that's a weird bit of behavioral psychology I know, but knowing that the codec advertised by the manufacturer is also the codec doing the talking between my phone and my headphones is fundamental to my satisfaction. I guess it's a bit like bit perfect when it comes to digital audio playback, essentially to see is to savor. Now I'm confident that many of you will relate to this, especially if you're a Bluetooth power user like me. Now, when it comes to Aptex lossless, this is where things begin to get a bit weird because Qualcomm's online database of Aptex enabled products says that the momentum, true, oh God, I can't even say it again, says that the Sennheiser Momentum True Wireless 4 support Snapdragon sound with Aptex lossless. So that's cool, right? And the Qualcomm website says the same about the Denon Pearl Pro. Again, that's pretty cool. However, we don't see any mention of Aptex lossless on Qualcomm's page for the Bose QC Ultra. We only see Aptex adaptive. And I thought that was a bit odd. Is that odd? I think it might be. But I went back to Bose's press release from last year and we see that Aptex lossless is very much on the QC Ultra's menu. I don't know why I can't say Sennheiser Momentum True Wireless 4 very easily. But what of Bluetooth power users like me wanting to get their kicks from seeing the presence of Aptex lossless on their Sony or Asus smartphone? So pairing the Bose earphones with the Asus phone Bose's music app doesn't tell us which codec is in play. And the Asus phone's Bluetooth setting weirdly says Aptex adaptive, and so too do the developer options for that particular pairing. So isn't it odd that it doesn't say Aptex lossless? Because that's what we'd normally see. We'd normally see LDAC or AAC or Aptex or Aptex HD, but instead of Aptex lossless, it says Aptex adaptive. And it's a similar story when pairing the Denon Pearl Pro with the Asus Phone 2. Both the Bluetooth connection panel and the developer options say Aptex adaptive. And the Denon headphones app reads right at the top of the screen, Aptex adaptive HQ 48 kilohertz. And I double checked this with my Sony phone and got exactly the same results. So where is Aptex lossless. Now the Sennheiser Momentum True Wireless 4 give us a clue as to where it is because on the Asus phone, the Bluetooth settings panel and the developer options both still read Aptex adaptive, but the smart control app, that Sennheiser's app, reads Aptex lossless, but only sometimes. Other times it reads Aptex adaptive. Now it was this majority absence of Aptex lossless confirmation across all three true wireless IEM models that, Bose aside, had me ask questions of their respective manufacturers, because I don't know anybody at Bose, but I know people at Sennheiser and at Denon and another manufacturer who I won't mention because their Aptex lossless headphone or slash true wireless earphone has not been announced yet. Anyway, one company representative told me that Aptex Adaptive is a different codec from Aptex Lossless, but that Aptex Lossless always has priority over the lossy Aptex Adaptive when both are present in the smartphone and the headphone. Man, this is complicated, right, isn't it? I mean, basically, you need to have the codec present in the phone and the headphone for the pairing to take place, no matter what that codec is. And the interesting finding from that email exchange was that Aptex Adaptive is lossy, which makes sense, really, because if it says 48 kilohertz, there's no way it can be lossless because lossless is only applicable to CD quality, that's 44.1 kilohertz. I was also told that Aptex Adaptive has five quality levels between which it dynamically scales. 
So that's kind of like Sony's LDAC. So in case you've not worked it out already, this dynamic scaling prevents playback interruptions to keep the music flowing, but at a lower quality level. But it doesn't explain why the Asus Zenfone 10's Bluetooth connection settings panel and its developer options pane all read Aptex Adaptive instead of Aptex Lossless, especially when the latter has priority. Now this is bothersome because it's Aptex Lossless and not Aptex Adaptive. That leads the way in the promotional materials for each earphone and also from Qualcomm. So a little more digging with another manufacturer revealed that Aptex Lossless is an optional part of Aptex Adaptive. So I then asked if Aptex Lossless was in fact the top rung on the Aptex Adaptive ladder. And the response was, yes, it could be seen that way. And another manufacturer also confirmed that Aptex Lossless did indeed sit at the top of the Aptex Adaptive ladder. He told me that Aptex Lossless is part of the Aptex Adaptive technology and that the codec shown in the developer options does not distinguish between different codecs within that Aptex Adaptive technology. My goodness, this is so nerdy, isn't it? But we are getting somewhere finally, right? And then that same contact then went on to tell me that the developer of the product can define specifically what is present if they want to, but that the recommendation by Qualcomm is that they don't do that. So this led me to conclude that Sennheiser has elected to have its smart control app show Aptex lossless as a distinct qualitative tier within the Aptex adaptive suite, but only in its app. So the upshot of all of this is that Sennheiser aside, we have essentially no idea if Aptex lossless is in play or if Bluetooth congestion has caused the connection's bit rate to step down to a lower level. That is until we use our ears, because the soundstage on the Bose and the Denon can, in my experience, momentarily collapse to sound muffled in the top end when listening on a busy street or at the airport. But I suspect that this is the very lowest level of Aptex Adaptive, because it's clearly a lower streaming quality. Now the Sennheiser, interestingly, seems less prone to lower level scaling. So its Bluetooth aerial connection or its Bluetooth radio might be more robust than the Bose or the Denon's. I don't know, I'm guessing at this point. But whatever the reasoning, that's not good news for power users like me looking for visual confirmation of Aptex lossless. And it's also a little confusing for everybody else, right? So I built a playlist of five songs on Tidal and took each true wireless IEM for a spin with the Asus Zenfone 10 and, and the Google Pixel 7 Pro. Now with the Denon and the Sennheiser, I really wouldn't swear on Aptex Lossless's audible advantages being especially crystal clear, particularly out in the street. Now there is a reason for this. The Bluetooth connection falls back to sort of normal or vanilla Aptex with the Google phone because Denon and Sennheiser put Aptex support, normal vanilla Aptex support, into their true wireless models. And I would say that the audible difference between the Asus phone as a source and the Google phone as a source is most pronounced with the Bose QC Ultra where we lose some top end extension and air. It's not a dramatic loss, but it's definitely noticeable. And this is probably, and I've got to underscore probably here, because Bose's fallback codec is AAC and not vanilla or normal Aptex. And this is probably a good time to mention that the majority of Aptex variants and LDAC are intended by their developers to sound better than AAC. And I think they do, but only very slightly. And your definition of slightly might be very different from mine because what we hear will be determined by the resolving power of our headphones and our abilities as a listener. And in my experience, 
Audible differences between different Bluetooth audio codecs, they're not black and white, they are shades of grey. So with that in mind, I find the step up from AAC to Aptex Lossless sonically worthwhile. But my jury, I think, is still out on the move from Aptex, so normal vanilla Aptex, to Aptex Lossless. I mean, I hear a teaspoonful of extra detail a few additional puffs of recording space air, and perhaps a slightly wider head stage. But those improvements are like going from a 9.2 out of 10 to a 9.5. And if it means moving away from IEMs or headphones that you like already, I advise you to stay put. And I say that not to throw shade over Aptex Lossless's Audible prowess, but to complement the effectiveness of the lossy variants of Aptex and Aptex Adaptive and Sony's LDAC. But perhaps most importantly of all, especially for this video, I hear far greater differences in sound quality between the true wireless IEMs themselves than between the codecs that run across their Bluetooth audio connections. In other words, the hardware matters more, much more. So the bottom line is this, Aptex lossless is nice to have, but it's not essential and don't expect your phone to tell you when it's in action. Now, of course, most people won't care which Bluetooth audio codec connects their smartphone to their headphones, but power users like me and probably you, we do, right? We care about seeing what's going on with our Bluetooth connection. And it's likely that power users like me, like you, will be drawn to Aptex Lossless, I know I was, when we see that Aptex Lossless is pivotal to the promotional language used by headphone manufacturers and Qualcomm. Because Bluetooth power users want to hear Aptex Lossless through their headphones, yes, but they also want to see it on their smartphone. And my complaint, such that it is, is that Aptex Lossless is hidden from view behind Aptex Adaptive's wall of dynamic bitrate scaling. And to those of you wondering why I and others fuss over this stuff, consider the results of a YouTube community poll conducted last month. 60% of 9,000 respondents said that sound quality was the most important feature of a true wireless IEM. And if you thought this video was important, please give it a like and consider subscribing below. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching. Yeah, that was really nerdy, wasn't it? Not many people are going to watch this video.